All right, let's talk about some more solo boost strategies with the XFX3. Today, I've been waiting the whole time I've been doing this series to talk about delay because delay is my go-to for a little bit of extra special sauce on a guitar solo. Here is the sound I've got at the moment. It's a sort of typical smooth high gain lead sound, the USA 2C++ amp model together with this uh, York Audio cab combination. Stock cab sounds like this. <laughs> that is very direct and in your face. Now I normally play in a three piece band, so using delay is my go-to because what it does is it kind of fills in some of the gaps in a really musical way, especially when the delay is synced up to the tempo of the song. So I'll give you guys an idea of how I approach uh, my typical sort of lead guitar delay sound, hopefully it gives you some ideas, and we'll talk about a couple of other strategies we can use there as well. So for delay, what I like is, I like the delay to be there, but also to not be too in your face. So there's a couple of things we can do in the XFX3 delay block to do that, basically to get rid of that sort of rhythmic aspect of a delay. Normally I like to use either the Deluxe Mind Guide delay, 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 what am I saying? Uh, or the Stereo Bucket Brigade delay, depending on whether I'm playing in stereo or mono. I'm playing stereo at the moment, so let's go with the Bucket Brigade delay. And this one is super cool because it's a stereo delay. It lets you adjust the left-right time ratio. So what I like to do is this. I like my delays more or less to be in time with the song I'm uh, playing. Song I'm saying, man, I'm all over the place today. Song that I'm playing. So I'll set that to a quarter note of whatever the tap tempo is, and then I will set the left-right time ratio to be 75%, meaning that the first delay is a quarter note, the next delay is actually gonna have a dotted eighth rhythmic value. So if I just dial that up, and say I started with like the mix at 50% and the feedback at zero, so it's just gonna be one repeat, you get you know your sort of typical uh, rhythmic edge style delay, I guess you would say, you get this. <laughs> which is doing way too much at the moment. That's really getting in the way of the main guitar sound. So the first thing I would do is lower the mix, probably to around 25%. That would be a good starting point. You get this. And that's kind of my default, I guess, for a pretty typical delay sound. A lot of delay pedals only let you adjust about this much. And then I'd set the feedback to about 15%. This stereo mode as well means that the right feedback is adjusted automatically, which I really like. I enjoy this over the dual delay block for that reason, because it will give me equal repeats on each side. You get this. As you can hear there, it's just adding a bit of space to the sound, which when you're playing with a loud drummer and a loud bass player and you're trying to play a guitar solo after you've been playing chunky riffs, really, really helps. And uh, this is sort of my go-to strategy in that sort of setting. If you're playing in a band with another guitar player, in general, I would say use less mix and use less feedback because you want your guitar just to poke out a little bit more over the other guitar and kind of not wash everything else out. But if you're playing with just a bass player and a drummer, I think these settings work really well. Um, Andy Timmons really popularized this, you know, I remember him saying uh, using these delay settings kind of put like a halo around the note and I definitely agree with that. It just makes everything kind of sound sweeter and sit a little bit better with the band. So there's still that like very rhythmic element of the delay and using something like the Stereo Bucket Brigade or the Mind Guy, they have a lot of high cut going on. So you could use any delay block that you like and just adjust the high cut until it sort of takes out, I guess that, um, that like piercy fizziness from the delay. You can see 2900 hertz, that's a pretty extreme high cut, but it works really great with this particular delay. The next thing to do is if you want less of those, if you want the repeats to be less defined is to adjust the diffusion. So you got a tone or duck and we've got this diffusion parameter. I like, well, let's say 20% diffusion. This is kind of gonna smear out the repeats. You get this. <laughs> You can 
here, as the delays go on there, they kind of become less distinct. So you can play around with the diffusion parameter. If you crank it all the way, it basically just sounds like reverb. <laughs> And that sounds really sweet to me. It's sort of not as full on as a typical digital delay, but it's also not as washy as a reverb. So diffusion's a magic parameter in that case. You can also play around with the ducker. Uh, essentially what this is going to do is automatically turn your delays down while you're playing. So I normally like the attenuation around 9 dB. Uh, we'll play around with the threshold just to get everything right. And then I like to increase the release time to almost 100 milliseconds. This is gonna be how long it takes your delay to get back up to standard volume, I guess. Let's have a listen to this with zero and then with nine dB. I'll just get that ready to dial in. So this is with no ducking. <laughs> You can hear that the delays kind of swell up after I've been playing. The more attenuation that you use uh, and the longer the release time, the more of a uh, pronounced effect that you're going to get there. For example, if I really crank the attenuation, you basically won't hear any delay and it will slowly swell. <laughs> I don't like that much attenuation, but you can dial it in right to the perfect spot for you. Some guitar players only like guitar, uh, only like hearing, <laughs> only like guitar. Like I said, I'm having a rough day. Only like delay in the spaces, so using the ducker there is a great way to do that. Combining it with diffusion and the extreme high cuts, I think, works really, really well, as well as using this dotted eighth quarter note halo, let's say, around the notes. So, uh, you know, if I was playing something in the tempos like one, two, three, four, somewhere around there, and I was sort of playing, it gives you this effect. I'll turn the delay off. And that's how I approach a delay sound. I love that stereo bucket brigade delay. Uh, it's really, really great. You might have other preferences, in which case the Axe FX3 has you covered. Uh, if you want sort of a vintage thing, I really like the stereo tape. At the stock settings, you get this kind of thing. I do like to turn the diffusion up a little bit and add a little bit of ducker, just like all the other delay types. You get this. <laughs> And the advantage with the ducker as well, if you want more mix, then it's not going to get in the way of your playing. And of course, if you want really pristine delays, either the 2290 block, I think is really, really great for this, or even just a standard um, digital delay, stereo digital, which is, oh, it's actually digital stereo, that's why I was looking in the wrong place, but adding a bit of ducker, adding a bit of diffusion, increasing the release time, and I take the high cut down to about 10k at the very minimum, and you get this, you get a really sweet delay out of it. <laughs> And then of course you can play around with the times. If you don't want the delays to be synced up to the tempo, just select none. And one of my favorite delay settings is it's 400 milliseconds, very similar to Eric Johnson's Cliffs of Dover kind of delays. <laughs> And you, know, you might want to adjust the left-right time ratio just by a little bit, rather than 75%, set it to somewhere between 90 and 95%, and it gives you just a widening effect. You could also go for a much shorter delay time, say around 200 milliseconds.
which kind of gives you a cool almost spring reverb kind of effect with a lot of feedback there. But for me, like I said, Stereo Bucket Brigade is, uh, that's where the party's at for me. Anyway, I just really love the actual delay tone there. The Deluxe Mind Guy is really good for that. The Ambient Stereo is another really good one as well. And of course, all of these tricks work in mono. One nice thing, like I said earlier about using a stereo delay in mono, I remember someone leaving a comment on a video going, you're an idiot. Why are you using a stereo delay but recording in mono? And it's for this reason, because I want to do a quarter note delay synced up with a dotted eighth delay, and I don't want to adjust the feedback individually. I want the feedback synced. Then it's super easy. Just do it with a stereo block, sum everything down to mono. Do not do this <laughs> with a TC2290 emulation because the delay lines are out of phase and you will get no sound. So uh, that's a really brief tour of how I would approach lead delays with the delay block. Then there's a multi-delay block, which I like even more, I think. So having a really quick look at this, because I like dual delays, right? Um, and I also like a little bit of chorus and modulation. I mean, that's something I didn't even talk about for the delay block here, adding modulation to your delay tone, but we'll talk about that a little bit more with the multi-delay. So let's get into the multi-tap delay. We've got a couple of different modes here, but the one that I like the most is the quad tap delay. You might like the quad parallel delay, the quad series delay, or the quad tape delay. But for me, quad tape, really, really straightforward. Uh, these settings here, you can see I've set up delay one and two as a chorus effect, meaning that I've got no feedback on either delay line, and I'm actually adding, what is that, 0 0.5 hertz for chorus one, 0 0.35 for chorus two. I've adjusted the depth uh, on each of them, and I have adjusted the delay times here. Then on delay three and four, I'm using as a dotted eighth and a quarter note delay. In this case, I do have to adjust the feedback to make sure I get an equal amount of feedback on each delay line. But this is huge. This gives you this tone. Let me just change the mix because that is way too high at the moment. Uh, and the level, so I'll just reset that. So this is gonna give you chorusing and delay in the same block. You don't need two blocks, you can do it all in one. You know, this to me gives you the Petrucci thing straight away without having to add a chorus block and a multi delay and a delay block. Just do it all with the multi delay block. There's so many options in the multi delay block though that I'm going to cover that in a separate video. So for now, I'll leave you with those kind of tips and tricks. If you've got tips and tricks of your own, please let me know in the comments. I'm always looking to uh, find new ways to use delay with my Axe FX3. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I will see you all around. Cheers.